Good evening. How are you? Very well. Probably too much drink already flowing, so it means that I can actually skip through these slides and you won't even remember a word I'm talking about. Um, I'd like to actually pick up on a bit of a theme uh, that the first speaker spoke about, which is gardens, and in particular, uh, sky courts and sky gardens as an opportunity to green the urban habitat. Now, basically, this is the summary of about 10 years of my research uh, that then culminated in a book last year. And what I found was that other than my wife getting very, very upset with me for actually spending every single waking hour writing, uh, I would also take snippets of time to actually relax and watch particular films that were also a source of inspiration. So what I'd like for you guys to do is actually shout out at particular points as to whether you recognize a particular film, because they are actually kind of related to the way that we can be actually greening our urban habitat. Now, it will actually kind of make sense as we go through. First film on the left, can anybody tell me? Yes. Microphone problem. Oh, maybe, but can you hear me okay? Is this better? I'll have to try and use my Shakespearean diction to project my voice, but basically... Can you come closer? Can you come closer? It's a bit like theatre in the round. But basically, Inception. Um, what we need to bear in mind is that in the 20th... Ah, thank you very much. In the... Um, in the 18th century, we used to have a city of spaces, and all you master planners, urban designers here will already know exactly what I'm talking about. We used to design spaces for people to actually interact, you know, before Facebook and LinkedIn. And uh, as we gr uh, progressively sort of um, moved forward with technology, we started to urbanize with population increase, with half the world's population living in inner city centers. We're finding that we're increasingly living in a high density urban environment. Now, what we find is that perception is very much about sort of density and density is very much about perception. Did you know that actually Paris, Hausmann's Paris, is actually denser than certain parts of Hong Kong? You wouldn't think it. It's all about perceived density. And that's why I love the film Inception. It kind of completely warps the imagination as to what is high density. Um, anybody for the film on the left here? My God, you look very good. Yes, The Breakfast Club, a wonderful 80s classic. I tried to show my wife this film. She doesn't really understand it. Maybe it's because I'm a child of the 80s, but basically, this was an alternative social space. These children, these sort of delinquents, were actually using a classroom out of hours because they were kind of, uh, what can I say, slightly truant. And so they used this space as their social space. Now, sky courts and sky gardens are increasingly alternative social spaces for us to interact. We can see that in the Pinnacle in Singapore or the Marina Bay Sands or various other buildings like the Commerce Bank. Uh, Norman Foster describes the Commerce Bank in Frankfurt as a wor vertical working village, whereby these open spaces in the sky are opportunities for social interaction. Next film on the left. Oh, close, actually. But yes, yeah, similar sort of idea. Luc Besson's Fifth Element. Thank you very much. Um, basically, sky courts and sky gardens provide alternative transitional spaces. When we think about mixed-use high-rise buildings, whereby you're creating vertical extrapolations of the city, whereby you may live, work, play, learn, heal, relax, all in one place, you need to have alternative modes of transport in between these different areas. Now, cast your mind back to the 19th century arcade. For instance, Galleria Vittorio Emanuele in Milan is an arcade that links Piazza Duomo with Piazza della Scala two primary squares in the city of Milan that has a lot of footfall. Creating an arcade actually improves the movement through the city and also forms a possibility for income generation. What we need to think about in terms of the sky court and the sky garden is that these transitional spaces will similarly aid movement through high density cities like Tokyo, like Hong Kong in the future. Oh, come on, are you really that rubbish at films? <laughs> Little shop of horrors, absolutely. Biodiversity. Now, I'm not encouraging people to be eaten by plants, but increasingly we need to think of ways of trying to enhance the biodiversity in our cities. 
you know, actually getting the odd creepy crawly into the center to encourage cross-pollination of plants and trying to help reduce noxious pollutants in the atmosphere is key to actually creating a more livable and lovable green environment. There's a wonderful plant called the mother-in-law's tongue plant. And uh, it looks very spiky and prickly. And um, I'm not necessarily saying that my mother-in-law is necessarily that bad a person. But it's a plant that basically absorbs all those nasty dust particles. And you could just wipe it clean. And it's so fantastic. It does remind me a bit of this triffid-like plant in the little shop of horrors. A recent film. You guys are definitely not film critics, I can see that. Uh, Elysium, absolutely. Um, environmental filters. Sky courts and sky gardens provide wonderful environmental filters. And just like the film actually had this sort of artificial ozone layer, uh, which basically helped encapsulate this utopian vision of a city, the sky court and sky garden have incredible environmental properties. The fact that a one square meter patch of rooftop garden can actually absorb six liters of water, particularly important in monsoon conditions, or the fact that you can actually help reduce ambient temperatures for five degrees centigrade. So if you look at, for instance, uh, Chicago, 2.5 million square feet of uh, rooftop garden um, after Mayor, Le Mayor Daly's kind of propagation of rooftop gardens, we can see that it can actually help reduce the running costs of our cities. You must know this. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Um, Frankenstein. Now, why have I got an image of Frankenstein in here? Well, it's all about socio-physiological well-being. Now, um, stay with me on this one. Um, there was an academic called Roger Ulrich who basically drew a correlation between um, planting and the socio-physiological well-being of individuals. So he got a bunch of Japanese students, God bless them, to actually watch a horror film. And he then measured their heart rates uh, as to how they could return to normal after watching a cityscape scene for 10 minutes. He then did the same study with another bunch of Japanese students watching the same horror film. And then he measured their heart rates after watching a green scene. And what we can see is that their heart rates return to normal far faster by watching the green scene. What we increasingly see is that planting is incorporated for socio-physiological well-being in healthcare environments and also in the city to actually improve the aesthetic benefits. Okay. Yeah, sleepless in Seattle. Why have I got this? Well, it's, yeah, it's a romantic place. And, you know, I'm sure some of you guys have actually taken your dates out to kind of, you know, romantic settings. You kind of get a view of the city and you, oh, it looks so nice. The city glows up so nice at night. They are incredibly good income generators. The sky court and the sky garden, and in particular, the observation deck, is a wonder of man's technological ingenuity. When we think of the Empire, uh, Empire State Building, um, when it was completed in the 1930s, this Empire State Building, which is where these two met, oh no, uh, they wrapped up the film at this point, um, the Empire State Building took more in tourist receipts than the whole building took in rent that year. And if we look at the Marina Bay Sands, when you pay $22 to go and get a view of Singapore skyline, uh, $22, well, you know, if you, actually, if you just go and get a drink there, um, you don't have to pay the observation deck fee. Um, but $88,000 per day just by getting a view. It's quite amazing. So, income generation. And um, yes, 1984, exactly. Big Brother is watching you. Legislation is coming to the fore. We see rooftops, uh, gardens being legislated in Germany. We're increasingly seeing rooftop gardens, sky court, sky gardens being legislated in Singapore, looking at permissible buildable areas increasing by the incorporation of sky courts and sky gardens for their socioeconomic, environmental, biodiversity, physiological, and social well-being benefits. And I thank you very much. <laughs>